Today, NVIDIA just launched their worst GPU ever. Ryzen 10,000 is set to be the biggest performance jump ever, and AMD may have actually fixed the VRAM issue. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Before we get into NVIDIA's new GPU, I just want to remind everyone that 8GB of VRAM was great, back when Crisis was a benchmark and not a meme. In honor of that, this is my new 8GB t-shirt, Modern Games, Yesterday's Memory. And it's for every gamer who's tired of watching their brand new GPU tap out mid-game. It's for everyone who wants to send the message to GPU makers that 8GB is in fact not enough. Get it now at meldstore.com or visit the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, the leaks, seemingly as always, were right. And NVIDIA has officially announced the RTX 5050 GPU. And as we go over this, we'll see just how right the leaks actually were. Hence, they were spot on. And we have pricing, release, some performance, and all of that. But first, let's talk specs. Starting things off, you can see that it comes with 2,560 CUDA cores, which when we compare it to the 5060, you can see that it's over 1,000 less cores, meaning this is a massive drop in terms of performance. Now, I will say that it does have slightly higher clocks. You can see the base clock is 2.31 gigahertz, while the boost clock is 2.57 gigahertz. But obviously that is not at all gonna make up for the massive core drop. Not only that, but yes it does, come with 8 gigabytes, but like I said, the leaks were completely spot on because instead of GDDR7, it just gets GDDR6, and it's based on a 128-bit bus. Finally, when it comes to TGP, we're looking at 130 watts, but like I said, we actually do have some performance. Now, the reason why I use quotes there is because you'll pretty quickly notice that a lot of these games have four times frame gen, yet it's comparing it to the 3050. And if you remember, the 3000 series doesn't have frame gen at all. So this is clearly a horrible comparison. Don't get me wrong. If you really love 4X frame gen, you don't mind some of the issues with it. This could look like a great GPU, but still, this is software that we're talking about while it's really trying to pretend that it just completely blows the 3050 out of the water. And also, don't forget that this is two generations back. Granted, NVIDIA didn't release a 4050, so I mean, it does make sense here, but given the fact that they're using 4X frame gen when the 3000 series didn't have frame gen at all, and that actually seems like it was purely a marketing move, still, like I said, it just does not look good. Now, some of these, I will say, don't have frame gen, and for the most part, you can tell. Like, for example, Fortnite, you can see, not much of a performance boost. But I will say that they are showing Apex Legends, Counter-Strike 2, and Overwatch 2, and these actually do get fairly decent performance jumps. Still, like I said, it just does not look good. This really isn't all that impressive, especially when we look at price. As you can see here, the RTX 5050 starts at $250, which is exactly what the two generation old 3050 started at. Sure, you are getting a performance boost, but once again, we're talking two generations back. This seriously proves just how terrible the 5000 series cards are. With that said, it is coming in the second half of July, so if you're interested interested in picking one of those up, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. And next up for today, while Intel's next generation Nova Lake CPUs are looking fairly impressive with a huge boost in core count, AMD has something massive up their sleeve. Now, if you saw my recent video on it, you know that current rumors point to Ryzen 10,000 CPUs getting up to 24 cores. And AMD more or less confirmed that by needing fewer cores per CCD to get the same amount of cores. But believe it or not, we're hearing some huge stuff when it 
comes to clocks. And I will say that I definitely believe them, given the rumors are right about Zen 6 being built on TSMC's N2X. Because as you can see, so Zen 5 was built on N4P, which means it's skipping N3P as well as N2P and going straight to N2X. So it's like a two and a half node drop, meaning these CPUs seriously are going to be unbelievable. Don't forget, we are talking the first core increase in quite a while, and it's going to be a 50% core increase, but then, according to a new video from Moore's Law is Dead, he claims that AMD is not only going up to 6 gigahertz with their next generation CPUs, but they actually plan on going significantly higher than that. In fact, a brand new video from Moore's Law is Dead and the title hints at nearing 7 gigahertz, meaning AMD's next generation CPUs like the Ryzen 10,000, unless they start adding AI into it, please do not do that. But if they do, for one, that's a perfect time to introduce all of this with the 10,000 series because we are talking likely the biggest jump ever. But anyway, basically we are looking at potentially over one gigahertz boost in clocks from Zen 5 to Zen 6. So we could seriously be looking at just like an unprecedented amount of single threaded performance and likely making them just the absolute dominance across the board CPUs when it comes to gaming. I mean, it likely won't even be remotely close, not to mention 3D vCache, all of that. Intel should seriously be worried. And lastly for today, as many of you know, VRAM is becoming a major issue in gaming. With things like ray tracing, huge texture packs, and potentially even lazy developers, the amount of VRAM you need in games has gotten to an absurd level. Of course, that's partially where the new shirt comes from, though don't forget that 8GB has been in low-end GPUs for years now, so it's more on hardware makers in my mind, but regardless, AMD looks to have just single-handedly solved this issue in games. As you can see right down here in this new article from Tom's Hardware, it says measuring the VRAM impact of trees isn't something most people think about while gaming, but AMD researchers have figured out a way to reduce the VRAM footprint of 3D tree rendering by a whopping 666,352 times. It says, They've actually developed procedural tree generation with work graphs and mesh nodes to optimize tree rendering on video memory. So to demonstrate this, the AMD researchers showcased a 3D rendered scene that required only 51 kilobytes of data to generate. But here's the wild thing. If the scene was rendered in traditional geometry today, it would require a whopping 34.8 gigabytes of video memory. Meaning they took a scene that would normally require 34.8 gigabytes and brought it all the way down to 51 kilobytes. Yeah a massive, massive difference. As you can see here, it says, this new VRAM saving technique leverages a procedural generation technique that eliminates the need for a 3D geometry format altogether. Meaning, instead of storing in video memory every leaf, every trunk, every piece of the tree, what they do is they just essentially save how to make a tree and then they just generate it in real time. It's procedurally generated. And the wild thing, you're probably thinking, okay, yes, don't get me wrong, trees do take a lot of memory, but that's not everything to a game. Well, here's the fun part, because trees aren't the only object that can be rendered with this paradigm. It says we can expect other objects and possibly even textures to be rendered this way in the future. NVIDIA is already working on neural texture compression to reduce texture demands on video memory, but work graphs and mesh nodes provide another method of achieving the same goal. And if they can do anything with this like they did with the trees, we seriously could look at some massive drops in VRAM requirements. Of course, game developers would still have to use this and implement it, but the fact that this is even a possibility and the fact that it's such a massive difference is absolutely promising and could seriously reduce the amount of future games require when it comes to VRAM.